and welcome back to my channel, Amanda here. If you are watching this video, if you are new to my channel, you have likely been planning your engagement shoot or a couple shoot, and I just want to congratulate you on finding your lobster. See? He's her lobster. <laughs> TV always gets it right. So yes, congratulations. Now, my goal here by the end of this video is to have you feeling prepared, to have you have created or started thinking about your vision, and have you walking into your couple shoots feeling a little bit less anxious about being in front of the lens, especially if you're not as comfy being there. So let's dive right in. Quick note too, my name is Amanda. I think I mentioned that already. I am a photographer in Southern Ontario. I've been shooting for quite a while, but I also also just had the experience of being in front of the lens with the love of my life, my lobster, Scotty, and we fully vision boarded this out. And that is where we are going to start with the tips. When you are working with a creative person, the one thing that is going to drive them insane is if they have no idea what you are looking for. So my biggest first tip when planning your couple shoot is to create a vision board. This is mine. So as you can see, it's pretty obvious. There's going to be a car in our photo shoot. We're going to talk about A story and B story in just a moment's time. But by creating a vision board, not only are you going to be inspired by things that people who maybe have a little bit more confidence in front of the lens have done, not calling you out in any way, because maybe you are like ready for your moment, but you're going to be inspired by different poses, different angles, different detail shots. For a lot of photographers, myself included, when I go on a shoot, whether it's branding, maternity, or a couple shoot, what I am thinking about is three things the scene, the characters, and the details. When you are really looking at creating that vision board, I want you to do the same thing. Set the scene. Are you out in nature? Are you in the city? Are you, I don't know, with an old vintage car in a parking lot? So when you are creating your vision board, I want you to do the same thing when looking for photos. And for my process, I usually go to Pinterest. This is where photographers are absolutely blasting the internet with their greatest work, and it's going to be a true tool for you to use in creating the vision board. If you are doing this all in Pinterest, what you can do is just create a secret board if you don't want anyone to see it and then just connect your photographer to that so that they can access it on the day very, very easily. I've also in the past created Canva mood boards, but if you are curious about how to create a mood board in Canva, I will link that up above in a separate video. So the first exercise of this video, after I just describe it, pause, I want you to go and get a piece of paper and a pencil and throughout the video, if you start to come up with ideas or words to describe your vision, I want you to jot them down. I'm also going to be showing you a ton of my work throughout this video. So if there's something specific you like about a photo, write that down as well, because you can even reference that for your photographer or incorporate it in your vision board. Next up, we are going to talk about A story and B story. If you have ever watched a sitcom, you've experienced an A story and a B story. Okay, so let's go with The Office because me and Scotty are truly a Jim and Pam couple. If you are watching an episode of The Office, the A story is likely going to be Michael Scott. I declare bankruptcy! Doing something that Michael Scott does at Dunder Mifflin. The B story is likely going to include someone else's interaction in the ensemble cast. Pam and Jim. Jim Halpert. Price check on fabric softener, the kind Ma of cute. Please don't touch that. That is not a toy. So for your engagement shoot, I want you to think of having your own A story and B story. For me and Scotty's engagement shoot, our A story was pretty obvious in the vision board. It was the car scene. But our B story is that Scotty and I love going out and getting coffee. We love hanging out in the city, hitting up different spots and people watching. And that is what I wanted our B story to be. When you are splitting up the time of your engagement shoot, you likely have maybe an hour for the shoot. Your photographer might stick around a little bit extra, but don't count on that. So to split up the time appropriately, likelihood you're going to have two different outfits. And this is how you can get a lot of different texture from one shoot in just one single hour. I want you to think of your B story as your first 20 minutes and your A story as your next 40. In the in-between of that, you're also going to have your outfit change. These are all things you have to think about when planning the timeline of your engagement shoot. So a really good example of A story and B story is Scotty and I getting coffee downtown and then hanging out in his dad's beautiful car down by the water, a little bit more glamorous and incorporated in our vision board. So you probably heard the words outfit change and thought, oh my God, Amanda, I don't even know <laughs> what my first outfit's going to be. So let me inform you on some tips about planning your outfits for your engagement shoot so you feel you, baby. This is where I'm going to bring in the four Fs. Fit, function, 
flow, and favorites. Fit is pretty obvious. You want it to fit you. You're going to be doing an outfit change, so the outfit that you're changing into, you want to have tried that on before you go to your photo shoot, okay? You're gonna wanna make sure that it's ironed, you're gonna wanna make sure that it is clean, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you feel comfortable wearing it. That is fit. I oftentimes find that when I am planning a photo shoot for myself specifically in a style sense, by trying on the outfits before as well really helps me inform my shoe choices and my accessory choices a little bit more amplified than if I hadn't have tried it on at all. Number two is function. Does it make sense? Are you down on the beach in a ball gown? I mean, if that's your vision for it, honestly, that sounds pretty epic. But does it make sense for the scene? For our looks, it was a little bit more glam by the car and a little bit more casual. I kind of looked like Rachel from Friends going to a coffee shop. So for you personally, in your vision, does it make sense? And can you do a ton of things? I have had couples jumping on each other, swaying with each other, bumping hips with each other, and the function of the outfit has allowed those couples to do that thing. Now, I will push you out of your comfort zone often, but only the photos that look the best are gonna make it into your album, and I can honestly say that's probably likely for your photographer as well. Number three is flow. So speaking of bumping hips and jumping and doing all these things, Flow is magic. Likelihood flow is going to come from her side. I'm gonna need to say this because a lot of dresses can incorporate flow, but who knows? Maybe you're wearing the pirate shirt from Seinfeld and you feel like that could be flow for you as well. <laughs> Now that's a great looking shirt. One thing that's interesting though, is that I actually didn't incorporate flow in my outfits for our engagement shoot. And I am totally okay with that. Even though I find it magical in many different senses, I just thought it didn't fit the scene for what we had visioned out. So you can also find flow in other areas like swinging an accessory or movement in hair. There are always ways in incorporating flow even if you don't have a huge tool skirt on. And number four is faves. I think that there is something really magical about wearing something you already own and something that you already wear all the time because naturally it's gonna look like you. If you can choose something that's a favorite from your wardrobe or if you really would like to go shopping, I actually purchased this dress for our engagement party but ended up saving it for our engagement shoot because I loved it so much. It immediately became one of my favorites and it also kind of amped up the glamor of it all. So if you wanna go shopping or anything like that, just make sure that you are choosing something that truly speaks to you versus kind of stepping out of your comfort zone for the first time. A lot of Couples are concerned about color palette. It is very nice to plan out your outfits so you match well in the scene together. I think that is something that 100% you should do. But it doesn't mean necessarily that you just have to choose neutrals. A lot of times I would say timeless photos look beautiful with neutral color palettes in the outfit. And these are some examples of palettes that I am talking about. But if you are a super colorful couple, go for it because that is just going to speak to you and your personality as individuals and as a couple. And I think that faves just need to be things that speak to what you would wear on an everyday basis. And someone's gonna see that photo and say, that is so you. Quickly on jewelry, I would say keep it simple and make sure that you clean your ring before your engagement shoot. This is a really big part of prepping and also have those nails groomed and cut and clean because all of those detail shots that we were talking about earlier, we are gonna get right up in your grill, so make sure that you've got your nails done. This is my suggestion for a nail palette to ask for if you are going to a salon. Bubble bath and put it in neutral are always fan faves. Since we are speaking clearly, about the pre-shoot getting your outfit ready i actually have a list on my website that you can download it's a free pdf i will link it down below but it basically speaks to having things pressed and ironed having things clean making sure that they fit making sure that you match each other and other things like keeping your makeup simple i have been on some shoots before where the person just has their makeup absolutely outside of the norm of what they normally would Okay, now be, make it even because we don't. What? What? You don't want to be. be I don't want it to be too much. I want it to be subtle. No, no. You know, you don't. You don't wear enough of this. And at the end of the day, you can tell that they almost feel a little bit less themselves. Whatever your everyday faves are, make it that. 
or just amp it up just slightly because I promise you that if you feel like you on this shoot, you're gonna be so much more comfortable in front of the lens and being super up close and personal with the person you love. If there are things as well that make you more comfortable like doing a self tanner before, or shaving your legs, etc., whatever that is, make sure that you do that the day before. Always lets the skin settle a little bit. I also have a little packing list like lotion and things like that with me and make sure you brush your teeth because this sounds so silly but you are going to be so close probably like making out with your partner on the shoot so make sure that you have good oral hygiene because we want to be a great cast member in the shoot last but not least i know that there are so many tiktok trends when it comes to like shooting the behind the scenes and all of these things but i want you to be present as much as possible be present. This is such a fun experience. Honestly, it is so fun. You're gonna be so giggly. You're gonna be so filled with love. You're gonna be holding hands on the ride home. It is so much fun doing these photo shoots and likelihood you're gonna have someone behind the lens hyping you up the whole time about your love. These are photos that you're gonna have for the rest of your life. Fingers crossed, guys. You're gonna have them hanging in your home. You're gonna have them at your engagement parties, all of these different things. So just be present and go in bringing an attitude of having so much fun. I have even more tips when it comes to what to wear and a little bit of the behind the scenes. I made this video, I think it was 2018 or 2019. I'll link it up above, but I recommend watching that if you are still curious about maybe a little bit more of the nitty gritty of what to wear to an engagement shoot. Depending on your photographer as well, be sure that you're prepared for different scopes of weather. I have also linked down below clear umbrellas just in case. I have these on photo shoots with me and honestly, they are super magical in their own right. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose how you're going to prepare for it. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. Have the best time. Seriously, have the best time. I hope this gave you a little bit, a little bit of reassurance of being in front of the lens. You're going to absolutely rock it. I know it. Last but not least, if you are curious about my services at all, I will link it down below to my website, my photography page, where you can see a little bit more of my portfolio. Be sure to subscribe if you want more of this kind of energy and uh, more videos like this. But without further ado, I shall see you in my next one. Bye guys. Bye.